want to bring in Kay Bailey Hutchison. She is former U.S. ambassador to NATO, also former senator from Texas. And Steve Israel, who is former congressman of New York, he's now the director of Cornell University's Institute of Politics and Global Affairs. Welcome to both of you. Um, Senator Hutchison, let's start with you on this, because from the outside, it certainly looks like it is a lot harder to get things done in Washington these days. As somebody who knows their way around, what do you think? Oh, Becky, that's the understatement of the year. We've watched this back and forth. Of course, the House and Senate have very small margins, the Democrats on the Senate side and the House on the House Republicans. So it means that you've got to work across the aisle, and that is very difficult to do with these small margins. So uh, it's tough, that's for sure. But I was pleased to see that there is now some funding uh, coming forward to fund this uh, cycle that we're in now, halfway in already. So hopefully they do fund the government. I know Republicans are trying very hard to hold the line on spending and start whittling down that debt, which we know, and also take care of some of the over-regulation of business that is beginning to really hurt our tech companies and our energy companies. Congressman Israel, if this is the easy stuff and we still don't even have approval, we're assuming at this point we'll get it before Friday. If this is the easy stuff, what does that mean about all the rest of the budgeting items that still need to take place before uh, March 22nd? Well, thank you for having me on. Uh, look, uh, some of the most important budget imperatives are still out there at funding Ukraine. Uh, funding Israel, uh, Taiwan. We have national security needs in this country, uh, and uh, they're not being funded right now because of the obstinance of several members of Congress. I will say to Emily's excellent reporting, you know, she mentioned kicking the can down the road. What's significant about this compromise is after months of kicking that can down the road, we're right back at the beginning of the road. This agreement largely conforms to the agreement that was made between the White House, President Biden, and then Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, it largely conforms with that agreement, where many months later, uh, and dealing with some of the, uh, the same issues uh, that uh, were already uh, addressed. The question will be, what I'll be looking at when this vote is taken in the House in, on Wednesday, Democrats will support this. It's being uh, considered under what's called suspension of the rules, which means you need a two-thirds vote. Democrats will support this. The question is, will Speaker Johnson be able to get at least a majority of his majority to join with Democrats and support and pass a bipartisan bill that the Senate can then vote on? Uh, Senator Hutchison, let, let's get to that, just how complicated it is in Washington these days. Obviously, the two sides often disagree on things. What, what's been different in the past that has led to bipartisan legislation getting passed? And Becky, I think it is because more and more members are being elected at the far fringes, and that's on the Republican side and the Democratic side. You've got the far left, the far right. and Unfortunately, there's these people are saying my way or the highway, but they're not realizing that in a legislative body, you have people elected from very different constituents, from very different states, and you have to compromise and get something of what you want, but not everything. And I think these far uh, right fringes, far left fringes, uh, are not compromising. And I think until we start seeing that in the electorate make a difference, where people start saying, I'm going to vote for a conservative or a liberal, but someone who wants to get things done and will compromise to do that, that I think we're going to continue to see this unless the electorate makes larger margins in Congress. And one thing I'm focusing on is the House and Senate for the next election. Uh, that's where I think the rubber hits the road. And if we're going to have a change in this overregulation, in the inflation, in the border crisis, we're going to have to have people who are willing to roll up their sleeves and compromise. That makes a lot of sense. Congressman Israel, we're about out of time. But what can you add to that? I would just add this. There was a bipartisan compromise on the borders and immigration, and Donald Trump rejected it, demanded that Republicans oppose it simply because he wanted to take the credit for it rather than give it to Joe Biden. That's not the spirit of compromise and bipartisanship we need in Washington.